Hello, once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends. In an effort to find some light and comfort during these challenging times, singer songwriter Mary Fall looks back to some of the essential music that has brought her sustenance, sustenance and clarity by reinterpreting songs from her greatest inspirations and a tribute to the music that defined her as an artist. Mary's most recent release, Can't Get It Out of My Head, is a collection of songs that she calls essential to her development as an artist. On top of all the madness that was happening in the world, I was grappling with the devastating loss of my mother and sister this past year and was feeling completely rootless. In an effort to find an anchor, a link to the past, a sense of home, I began to immerse myself in the comfort of music from my youth. The challenge for me and my producer, Mark Doyle, was to make each of these songs our own while paying tribute to their original greatness, says Fall. Along with a standard high-res audio version, we wanted to bring these classics into a new light by utilizing the latest audio technologies to reinterpret it. My favorite Pink Floyd, Neil Young, George Harrison, Richard Thompson, Moody Blues, The Rolling Stones, ELO, Nick Drake, Judy Collins, and the Mamas and Papas songs, and the brilliant, full, immersive, high-resolution clarity of 5.1 sound. Please welcome singer, songwriter, musician Mary Fall to Interviewing the Legends. Hello, Mary. Hi. Hi, Ray. How are you? I've become a big fan of yours, by the way. You are an incredible singer. Thank you so much. Um, so were you were you an October Project fan or is this a recent thing? Basically a recent a recent thing, but I did go back to your heyday of of, of that band and right, right. I love everything you did. It's it's incredible. You. you got a beautiful Thank voice. Thank you. Um can't get it out of my head. Um here's what I said about it. I said Mary's passionate and soulful vocals actually outshines many of the original performers on this cover album and i gave it five stars <laughs> well thank you Ray. that's very nice of you you know here's the deal when you do a cover and I, I i really did do this it wasn't like i had some sort of record deal that i had to fulfill right so i'm indie and um i just i had a, i had to climb my way out of a funk and um i just I thought what I always do is just take on a big project. And I I kept thinking, what are I needed that I needed a, a warm, comfy blanket around me. Exactly. And that's what these songs are. These songs go back to when I was learning to play guitar, mm -hmm. uh, especially those Neil Young songs. Those and and I remembered back to when I I was a kid. I must have been about 12 or 13. And I ordered, you know, with the dollar you would order those Columbia house. Oh, sure. You know, you'd get like, I don't know how many they said you 10 or 12. Yeah. And a lot of the songs came from those first records that I bought and I played them over and over because that's all I had. Those mm -hmm. were mine. I had older siblings, much older siblings who were teenagers when I was right. a kid. So I did get that that beautiful wash of all the 60s music. And they all had sort of their own taste. My oldest brother was the folky in the house. Mm -hmm. and we had everybody, Tom Paxton, Phillips, Peter Paul, everybody. Um, and Judy Collins, a lot mm -hmm. of early, early Judy. And then, and I just would go into his room when he wasn't home and listen to all that stuff. Yeah. And then my sister had all the great female singers of the 60s, all of them. Yeah. And my other my other brother, a little younger than the rest of them, was sort of the rock prog guy. And that's where I discovered the Moody Blues and Pink Floyd. And um, so, but when I started to develop my own taste in music, I, I fell in love with British folk. Mm -hmm. Nick Drake, I had a boyfriend in the ninth grade who was big into British folk and all that. So he turned right. me on to Nick Drake and Richard and Linda Thompson right. and, oh my God, Sandy Denny. Yep. And when I heard them, especially the female voices, um, they sounded like me. Mm -hmm. and I didn't sound like a lot of other people, um, even, you know, back then, and I still don't really, but that's who I resonated with. And um, so 
I I went back to all that material and and oh my god, an ELO. <laughs> I just have always <laughs> loved ELO. I made no bones about it. <laughs> and um I even bought it. I even bought like the whole like retrospective set. I lo- I just I I love I love Jeff Line and and I I um and and of course George Harrison. And yeah. I got to sing um, I was asked to do be, be part of a George Harrison tribute in New York. And, oh, really? Yeah, and and so I was surprised they asked me, but mm-hmm. I, I was glad because for me, George, George, that all things must pass record. That has gotten me through a lot of things in my life. That record, yeah. those lyrics in anybody else's hands mm-hmm. sound very preachy, mm-hmm. but George really lived that and. His, oh, all things must pass. I just played that again this these past two years over and over again. It just keeps on giving. And so I, I decided to do Beware of Darkness because I think it's an important song. And um, I never heard other than George himself. I've heard covers of it, but I never thought they really got to the essence of that song. I agree. And so I felt I have a heavy hand in in the uh, the arrangements mm-hmm. a heavy head that one in particular i had been playing by myself mm-hmm. since that i did that um that big tribute i also did um uh inner light and mm-hmm. uh because i heard because years ago i heard jeff lying do it and i thought oh i gotta i gotta i gotta do that so so that's what i did for the tribute but i did i decided to do beware of darkness and i wanted it to have a big crescendo so I don't do it like the original. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of I wanted to take out a lot of the Beatles Harrison right. flourishes because it's yes. so easy to go there. Exactly. And I know that I my my uh, producer is an amazing guitar player, and mm-hmm. I know he kept wanting to go there. That sort of slidey hair, and it's like no, that is so. It just we have to make it our own. And that's the thing: if you're going to do a cover you got to make it your own. Exactly. And, and that can be very challenging. Yeah. Um, not so much with the with the ELO. You know, ELO, it, it, those songs are deceptively uh, simple, but mm-hmm. very well written. And, and you can tell a good song by if you can strip it down and play it acoustically, bare bones, it's a good song. It's yep. not dependent <laughs> on a riff or, you know, a ho- it's just, it's a bare bones good song. And, and, ELO has a lot of those. Yeah. You, can, you can strip them down and maybe because that's how he writes them, you know, just sort of yeah. strip them down. Um and then of course there's there's Nick Drake who is I don't know if you're a fan but I Nick Drake is well he's a sacred cow, you know. Yeah. yeah. Got to be really careful covering him because right. he's got an idiosyncratic way of playing guitar and can't go there. And then he had those beautiful string arrangements, mm-hmm. you know, and so we had to think this out. And I said to Mark, Mark is also a really good piano player. And I said, why don't you just do a shimmering piano kind of thing? Let's see if that works. So we try out a lot of stuff. And Mark and I had been, um, have you ever heard Our Dark Side of the Moon? Yes, of course. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, so, it's incredible. So we did that years yeah. ago. We didn't have a deal. And um, do you remember... Uh, David Werner from Wizkid way back in the way day. Way back, yeah, yeah. He was the co-producer on that. And my mm-hmm. God, he had a pure vision of what he wanted on that record. Right. And, um, I would say that's one record that I didn't have as heavy a hand on. Right. In terms of the musical direction, certainly in the sort of hmm. emotional, spiritual direction of it, I did. But those guys... We did that all on spec. Just we didn't have a deal, and I would drive up to Syracuse every other weekend or so, and layer by layer by layer. And I loved working with them. They just let me try anything, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I never felt judged or anything like that. And it was it was very freeing for me. And we had such a good time doing that record that I ended up having Mark as my my music director after that, and it's been great ever since. You know, know, there's so many Pink Floyd tribute bands, you know, you got the Australian version, the British versions, but they play it exactly like Pink Floyd, you know, like Uh the whole album. I like the way you did it because, you know, when you do money, 
that was the the way it was meant to be by Roger Waters. It was supposed to be a blues tune, like a blues track. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, had- he so said that. I yeah. was thinking about, and you know, again, we had to make each song we had to approach on its right. own and make it our own. And that one, you know, we thought, should we do it sort of big band? We tried it, nah, that didn't right. work. And then I, I was in New York. This was, you know, again back in the the, the you know mid mid two thousands, and I I saw these I saw these um, Eastern European women. Um, I, I I suspect they were Russian mob wives or whatever. <laughs> I, don't go, I don't want to get myself in trouble here, but they they have a certain air about them, and. It's very like get out of here, you know. You have to do this, and, and I was thinking, to, and I remember this hearing this woman go, "No, that's too much money." And so I thought, "That's it. That's who this is. It's like money." Yeah, exactly. And, and I wanted it to be vulgar. Yeah, like really vulgar. I and, think it's great. Uh, so that's, <laughs> and then we got the tablas going. You know, and just making it kind of snaky sounding, and I wanted it to sound evil. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So anyway, that's but we we had a we had a blast doing that, and then we you know we ended up getting a deal with V two, and that was that was fun. Well, the entire album's a fantastic interpretation. You know, your your brain damage and eclipse was amazing. You know, and and uh, I, I want to mention if you ever want to get back into Gilmore and do some more stuff, here are my yeah. suggestions. Okay. Oh, oh I, God, I got I got to get a pen. All Hold right, because I I know you would be perfect on these songs. Okay, do it. Go. Tell okay. Me. David Gilmore's first solo album is incredible. I think yeah. if you do I Can't Breathe Anymore from this first solo album, oh. you would bring it so much more out, you know, and it's a great song. It it needs more, you know, marketing, you know. I mean, it's it's yeah. The other one is On the Turning Away from Momentary Lapse of Reason. Yeah. You should do that one. You should do High Hopes from Division Bell. Hold on, hold on, hold on. High hopes, division. High hopes. This all, <laughs> you know, your voice reminds me of these tracks. That's why I'm bringing this yeah. up. And uh, wearing the inside out from Division Bell. That was a. Uh, that was done by the. Uh, gosh, what is wrong with me? Uh, Richard Wright. That was a Richard Wright song. You know, okay. it's which is incredible. But I, I could hear you doing these. Well, you know, the first thing I'm going to do when when, we're, when when this is over is go and mm-hmm. listen to all these. Yes. I, I keep thinking because people are saying, hey, when is volume two coming out? So, <laughs> it's so great, man. You're, you're such we, a good singer. We got this out. We It, yeah. it really worked for us. It got me out of my funk. Yeah. Yeah, and, I could see that. And, and I really enjoy I because... Because I love these songs so much. That I know. In a place of just love 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 and 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 it just it 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 just kind of healed me mm-hmm. you know and um i highly recommend it to people <laughs> i really do but I really you know do. you're beware of darkness i mean you know george actually doesn't do the song justice like you said it's beatle-ish his voice is very it's kind of somber you know and you bring it up you know he was a great singer he was never known to no, be a great singer. he wasn't uh, but and I wanted a sort of orchestral feel at the yeah. end. I wanted to pull out all the stops, yep. you know, just and um, because that's it. Just that's where the song is building to, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I did. I, I I did always like that live version that he does with um, oh God, now Mary the Brain, you know, the <laughs> piano player that, that influenced Elton John so much. You, you know who I'm talking about? It's not N- Nicky Hopkins, no. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Um, anyway, it'll, it'll it'll come to me. Um, okay. But he d- he does a duet on "Beware of Darkness" uh, right. with him, and um, and it's you know it's it's great. But um, yeah, I just I wanted to to do it my way, you know. And you did the same thing with the great Valerio. I mean, you know, you did. Well, that was what. Ooh, because I love Linda Thompson. And yeah. You're not going to convince me that you can top her or Richard Thompson for that right. matter. Right. So, but. Again, we couldn't go with that that um, that particular uh, guitar style that Richard Thompson has. That mm-hmm. he has a way of playing. Yeah. So again, we we just we went sort of a keyboard route right. and made it a little bit. Uh, we gave it a, a, a some percussion and and I love the outro of that. I think it's 
very spooky. But that I I could have done any one of a number of, of Richard Thompson songs. Mm-hmm. I, I love so many of them. Um, yeah. But that's one that isn't done very often. No, and, it's not. And it, it's it's just one that's always haunted me. And I think it's it's such a meditation on fame. Right. And and it, and I just felt it was a pro- a lot of these songs. What's interesting, even though they're mostly old, they have. They never lost their relevance mm-hmm. ever. Do you know what I mean? How some songs sure. have really dated. Yeah. Those never did. And um, they still speak to me mm-hmm. now as much as they ever did. Mm-hmm. Especially, especially Pink Floyd yeah. songs. Especially anything Roger Waters does too. I mean, it just he, you know, he was kind of a prophet in the early 70s. I mm-hmm. mean, he, a lot of those records speak to us now more than they even did when, when the songs came out I, I think anyway i think um, you're right yeah, yeah you know a lot of people compare you they they mentioned sandy denny but i really yeah. hear in can't get it out of my head i i hear judy collins and i hear carly oh. simon i hear you a, a little well, bit of carly you know, simon i carly carly was a huge influence on me she was she was a white girl that had swagger <laughs> in her voice you know what i mean yeah she had a particular swagger yeah. And, um, especially those 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 early records. And yep. uh, boy, I played that. I don't cover her because I I there's nothing I'm going to do <laughs> to outdo Carly. And yeah. I'm not I can't. I sound too much like her a mm-hmm. little bit. And right. That, right. Not that we're, I, we're different, but we have a, 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 a vibrato that's very, very. Exactly. Strong. Exactly. So, you know, I just. I don't cover her for that reason. <laughs> I don't. I'll yeah. have to wait until she's gone from this earthly plane. I know. It's not going to sound like your own. No. You know, if you I do, even do think her. most people don't do Joni very well. I mean, I've yeah. covered her, but, but that's it. I, I'd rather just hear Joni do Joni. Right, right. You know, I, I just, I haven't heard better versions of what, of what she does, really. Whereas with Leonard Cohen, I have mm-hmm. heard better versions. Right. Um. Of Hallelujah, I mean, I I think Rufus Wainwright did a great job on mm-hmm. Hallelujah, and and of course, there's the classic Jeff Buckley. Yeah, know, exactly. God, basically. So. Well, it was I, nice I, to I, hear. I, it was nice to hear Ruby Tuesday coming back, and we haven't heard that in a while. I know. You did a great version I, with Ruby Tuesday. You know, that, was the first, <laughs> that was the first single I ever bought as a kid, and I really? was. Really, really young but I, I just fell in love with I loved early Rolling Stones I loved yeah. Brian Jones era I know Rolling Stones. it's a little more it has a little tinge of classical in it um and I um the, I wasn't allowed to play the flips the b-side of, of that song <laughs> you know, was, let's spend the night to get my mother to say, oh yeah, and I do not have that played in my home okay, yeah. so, it's yeah. cool talking to you because we're about the same age I was born oh, in 59 yeah. Okay, so I'm a year older than you. Yeah, and I I love talking to the Runaways, you know, like Lita oh, Ford okay. and them, because they're all my age too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, uh, it's it's um, yeah. I mean, I here's the deal. I think I the older I get, the more gratitude I have that I grew up in the era that I grew up in. We yes, were very you know, very fortunate. Yeah, that's never gonna happen again. It's not. It's not. We run free all day long. <clears throat> had uh, i mean and we had we were surrounded with great music and music that really fed your soul mm-hmm. no not just fed your ears but fed right. your soul. in a way that um with with very few exceptions very few mm-hmm. i i my soul does not get fed by most modern music these yeah, days i can, me too. I can enjoy some of it but i yeah. don't get fed in that way anymore yep. And, yep. Um, and i don't think it's it's my age I just, I just don't, I, I don't think it's very good. The music's not very important, like it used no. to be, you no, know? No, it isn't. It you isn't going to, yeah. nobody's going to, nobody with those big corporate contracts is coming right. to the world, honey. It's no. sad. It is sad. Very sad, yeah. yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe there's some grand cyclical thing that happens, you know? I where, hope so. I'm still waiting for it. Yeah, you know? yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. Here's a compliment for you. Okay. I've heard a lot of great prog bands try to do Tuesday afternoon, and you've got them all beat, man. They cannot do it like you do it. Well, I've been wanting to do that song for years, but the you know, there's that bridge, mm-hmm. and the bridge to me, you know, no disrespect to Justin Hayward, but 
the bridge always seemed a little fey. Right. A little, you know, I'm looking for myself. The fact right, right, like, right. You know, the fairyland of love. And, <laughs> and I kept saying, I don't know, Mark. I don't know. And we, I said, we've got to conquer that. We've got to find a way to do it where it's just, it's, it's great. And then I, I was remembering back to Dark Side, what we mm -hmm. did. And the, mm -hmm. the, the, I call them the boys. My producers kept saying, why don't you find some repetitive chance mm -hmm. you know because you're going to need to layer them right. and of course because i wanted to you know sort of layer it with little messaging one of my chants was nova sordo seclorum okay and mm -hmm. things like that and and but i i used some chants from the bhagavad gita because mm -hmm. it's basically beautiful to sing right and it right. Rhymes, right so yep. i I went and looked up because I, I love Vedic astrology and in Vedic astrology, they have mantras for each mm -hmm. day of the week that would right. honor the God of that day. So the God of Tuesday is Mars and okay. the chant of Mars is this particular thing. And I said, well, what the hell? It's Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> Let's honor the God Mars and we'll, and I did the, it did it in the lowest voice. And then we layered that. So it sounds like a bunch of men singing yeah. and it gave it this groove yep. that that thing needed. And we just, we just really layered it and layered it. And now honest to God, I can't wait for that part of the song to come up because it's just like, Rawr, you know, yeah. it, it, it's you. It's the so, best version I've ever heard. I I actually you. interviewed I interviewed Ray Thomas of the Moody Blues on a Tuesday afternoon. I thought that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, so funny thing, we, I recorded it on a Tuesday, totally Did by you? accident. <laughs> the final mix was on a Tuesday. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> there you well, go. Where'd you get um, got a feeling? I mean, that's that's oh. definitely not a big hit I, from the mamas and papas well it, it well it wasn't it was you know it was a b-side for them yeah. it was the only one that michelle sang right so, you know um i you know i was a huge mama Cass fan i mean mm -hmm. you know she was great. and i was a kid i was about eight or nine years old when my older sister brought home that first mamas and papas record and i uh it just blew my ears and mind. I fell in love with them. I mm -hmm. still love the mamas and the pies. Yeah. It's just like a wall of pure ear candy coming at you. And yeah. um, I just, yeah. And I, I just thought that would be an interesting one to try because again, it was a very breathy vocal that Michelle did. And I exactly. could really make that. My, I sort of do it more of the way maybe Cass would have done it. You right. Know? Yeah. You know who and, I, who I really liked back in the day, um, sure. um, Spanky in, in um, our oh. gang. Wasn't she great? She was a great singer, man. Okay, so that's the thing. I could, I, I was, I, we tried to do Sunday will never. Yeah. yeah. But right. I, I have to tell you again, it's that vibrato. I sound, ah. I sound very much like her. Right. And I, I can I can absolutely copy her note for note, and I sound a lot because we had those records in the house when I was yeah, a kid. Yeah, and I also also I can sound like uh, Judith Durham of the Seekers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can sound just like Judith Durham. Isn't that of funny? The that's that's hilarious. I could like do that. <laughs> I love. I, it's so funny. My husband and I were were looking at those old videos, and I there's the guy with the like the, the big gla the horn rim glasses that yeah. plays the upright bass yeah. and everything. I love those you know. days. <laughs> uh, yeah. Those yeah. are cool days. Yeah. 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 And of course, Comfortably Numb, which is probably one of the funnest songs to sing. When you go to a Pink Floyd concert, the whole audience is singing Comfortably Numb. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I've been to many Floyd concerts and you did a great yeah. version of that as well. Thanks. Thanks. I had, you know, I was stretching. I was trying to do a timeline that would remain within late 60s, early 70s. Just yeah. keep it right in that but I, I broke my own rule for comfortably. <laughs> it's like, go to hell with it. Just, just do it. I'll do any excuse to cover Pink Floyd. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, but when you cover Judy Collins, I got to say, it's a lot like Judy Collins. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm singing an arrangement that we used to, we used to sing. Um, uh, when I was with October project, we used to do, we never re recorded that song, right. actually, but we used to do it. And it was, 
it was an October project arrangement of that song. Right. It sort of changed it into, um, you know, a different, different time signature. And um, so I, I do it m musically um, the version that, that we did and that I do. And of course, Mark put his own spin on it with yeah. the chamber ensemble and, and all of that. So, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Judy Collins, there's no doubt about it. She was a huge, I mean, we really have very different voices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's really kind of a, soprano mezzo soprano, right, right. and i'm the furthest thing from that so yeah. uh um anyway but but you know huge influence what judy collins could sing anything she could mm -hmm. sing any kind of material and she was a great discoverer of songwriters yeah. still is really um so oh god yeah i i just i wanted to grow up and be her when i was a kid just because yeah. she, could, she could sing her own stuff she could she could sing classical, she could sing folk music, theater, anything, you know? Um, yeah. I I did interview Judy and I told her every time I hear Send in the Clowns, man, a tear keeps coming down. I, I can't help it, man. It's just such uh, a, know. you know, sad, yeah. beautiful song. It really well, is. I had to sing that at someone's memorial service. Did you really? Oh my know, God. Like, keep, it had together, been, keep it together, keep it together. That had to been <laughs> so hard. <laughs> Oh, oh God, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, yeah. Here's something interesting. Um, when you were with October Project, how come they called you the goddess of goth? <laughs> um, oh, well, first of all, uh, I I had one black dress that I wore over <laughs> and over again. That's right. Cool. Number two, um, I was I was I dyed my hair. My hair is sort of a light brown, and you know, right. I color it because I'm a girl and but yep. uh, but it's just sort of a light brown and I I I decided I would go darker and it was a Miss Claire all mistake and <laughs> I, I went so dark yeah that it was like oh wow but it kind of worked with our whole sound <laughs> and so I had the black hair and, and I dressed a little little on the vampire side and uh, <laughs> so we had a sort of subculture following of sort of right. vampire uh folks and um you know they hmm. would they would show up to shows in full vampire regalia yeah and, uh, which is the only other time i ever saw that was um i i, I got to be friends with ann rice and ann invited me down to new orleans to do the lestat ball very cool that is it that is a subculture that yeah. is an interesting interesting subculture a lot of um a lot of grafted on fangs mm -hmm. a lot of that. Out of that, like, I don't know how you hold a real job nine to five with bangs, but you know, it's got to be a place somewhere. Anyway, uh, but it was uh, that was that was a lot of fun, and and so goddess of God, yeah. So it it's also that our stage presence, the the company didn't like us being funny on stage, or and I didn't talk at all, really, mm. not at all. So mm. they wanted a, a sort of as as our A and R guy said to yeah. us. Um, you know, when you when you guys talk, it's like a cup of coffee after an acid trip. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Interesting analogy. But, uh, you know, anyway, I, uh, I I could understand that. You know, we had a we were they were looking at us like a brand. Right. You know? right. Our, yeah. our brand was sort of quasi goth, mm -hmm. or as um, there, I love good bad reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, my fav my favorite bad review, and we didn't get many bad reviews with October Project, but my favorite one was from the Washington Post. Really? Two lines, no, one one sentence, and it said, uh, James Taylor meets the Cocteau twins and they all drown in a sea of NyQuil. <laughs> Jeez. That, that was There's a lot favorite. of thought into that one. <laughs> now, my favorite, it wasn't a bad, bad review. It was, yeah. it was, it was like, she does this thing well and this thing, it's like, uh, Mary Fall, somewhat unwieldy, but always interesting. <laughs> I thought, That's you know, I yeah. would be for this long. I, I would second that. So mm, Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I want to mention, you mentioned Anne Rice. You wrote the theme, a Exiles, yeah. for, the, for the Wolves of Midwinter, which was yeah. very cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah people uh, should know that. So, um Anne wrote me a, a, a beautiful, a, a fa basically a fan letter several mm -hmm. years ago. And she had just discovered all my, my work and, and 
everything I'd ever done. And she had, she had a huge Facebook following and she spent this rainy afternoon posting everything I'd ever done. And mm. she said, she said, I have found the voice I've been looking for. Why it's neither male nor female. <laughs> oh, it's geez. perfectly androgynous. And I was sort of like, really? Thank you. <laughs> I think, I guess. But I could understand. I mean, I have I have a lot of yang energy in my voice. Right, 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 right. I've got a deep, deep voice. So yep. in any case, um, she was in town for a big writer's convention. Mm -hmm. So I sent a friend of mine over to Anne's hotel room to give her a copy of my my new record. And Anne, Anne said, oh, gosh, thank you so much. And she said, look, give this to Mary. Mm -hmm. And it was a galley of a new book coming out called The Wolves of Midwinter. And she mm -hmm. said, tell her she's in the book. She's a character in the book. I'm like, oh, my God. Wow. So, um, you know, it was discussed. And I ended up writing the theme, the theme for that. It went on the audio book. And, you know, I love writing for books and movies. I love doing that because it you have a framework that you're mm -hmm. you're working from. Yep. Where sometimes I'm I'm less inclined to write things directly from my own life. Mm -hmm. Um I think especially if it if it has to do with peering into your relationships with a magnifying glass. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you want to stay married, you, you don't do that. Okay. Yeah, that's true. You want to keep a relationship. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, but I love, I, I, and so she had these great characters and yeah. Anne is a very vivid, was a very vivid writer. And so it made it easy for me. I sat down, I read the book, I took notes, I wrote the song, we got it. We got it written and recorded and mastered within about a week and a half. Wow, and that's incredible! Got to deliver it to Random House in yeah. time for the audio book. Fantastic! So yeah, but it was it was fun. It was yeah. fun to do that. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I talk about my personal life. This is <laughs> my book about growing up in the family business. That's me. <laughs> oh, look at that! I'm actually pitching it for a sitcom. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, so. Uh, Maybe I'll need some music from check, you. Check the G's. <laughs> check the check G's. The G. Okay. Yeah, we said waiting on a customer meant check. Go check the G's. A G was a customer. You know. Where Where did you grow up? D.C. Washington D.C. Oh, okay. We We had so, We had retail stores oh. there for years, uh, two blocks from the White House. So we wow. saw a lot of a lot of different things. Boy, yeah, yeah. I'll say. Yeah. So I actually got a bite. Somebody, a producer says to send me a script. So that's a good sign. So now I got to write the script. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What I'm afraid of is when they say I need 15 episodes, then I'm going to go, oh, no. <laughs> you can get people to help you with that. I hope so. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to write, but I don't know. You want like some, some great, uh, you know, channel like amc to pick it up they always seem to do a great job yeah with touch, yeah you know? yeah that would be cool yeah. i want to mention two songs i believe you wrote i believe you wrote both of these uh ben Indi habibi did you write that no, no i didn't no you did that not. Song, no that song is from the 11th century in spain in andalusia okay. and the language is archaic no one speaks it anymore it's right. a combination Spanish and Arabic. So you'll hear Spanish words and you'll hear, you know, well, like Habibi is a term of enjoyment. Yeah, love. Yeah. Arabic, it's, you know, sweetheart, beloved, you know. Yeah. So that's a, that's a very, very sensual song in a, language, in a gorgeous language. And I got to, when I did that for Sony Classical, I got to work with some of these great Middle Eastern musicians that was, boy, was that fun. That was, that was, I, that that's a real treat for me i'm gonna tell you why i love it so much okay first of all i'm half cuban and half syrian i grew up oh so wait so do you speak arabic shoya uh, shoya okay so my, you must uh, have recognized some of the words i and love it my my uh grandfather was from catalonia also and they they got their own language in they Spain. Have their own language. yeah yeah but i grew up listening to arab music and Cuban music as a kid. So when I heard yeah. this and the way you sing it, oh my God, you sound Arabic 100%. I, I, I got to tell, I just, I, I, there is not a show I do that I don't sing that song. It's I love fantastic. it so much. I always say if, 
before I leave this earthly plane, I yep. would love to do that in concert in Spain, like at the Alhambra in Granada. Yeah. I would, yeah. I would love to do that. Um, yeah. It's fantastic. You know, I've, I grew up listening to, I don't know if you ever heard of Um Kasum. Oh, um, oh, 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 because, okay, so if you, <laughs> if you ever, like, if you find yourself with an Egypt, any Egyptian, or yep. say you've been in, like, I, this has happened many times in cabs. Right. It, really, anybody from the Middle East, it doesn't have to be Egypt, it can be Saudi Arabia, anything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And all you have to say is, Um Ketub, and they're like, you know Um Ketub, you know. <laughs> exactly. I she's mean, my goddess. gosh, she's like a goddess to yeah. them. Yeah. And it's so funny you see those old concerts of her mm -hmm. in uh in Egypt. <laughs> Black and white. Crying. Yeah. I know. Everybody's like crying. It's amazing, isn't it? One note and they start crying. But you, you know? got that voice that you can you can pull it off. You know, yeah. you can do that, that kind of music. It's yeah, incredible. Yeah. yeah, it would it'd be fun. The there's a there's a lot of good music from that era in Spain yes. because it's that mixture of Arab and Spanish culture, and mm -hmm. that's a nice mix. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's a great no, mix. No, it's a nice mix. Yeah, and um, so, yeah. In fact, uh, I I met a doctor from Saudi Arabia. My husband and I were on mm -hmm. retreat, and um, he was saying, "I will send you. I I know you could do some of these songs. I will send you." Yes, some. you can. He's right. And, uh, so yeah, yeah. Another great singer from the Middle East is Farouz. You know, for Ruse. Yep, yeah. yep, 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 yep. And then, it's, then there's sort of, uh, I, I, years ago, I fell in love with Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. He mm -hmm. is a singer singer. Mm -hmm. So I know Jeff Buckley loved him and, and mm -hmm. Eddie Vedder loves him. But that's a, it's a really great way to develop your voice to yeah. sing along with, with Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. He's dead now, but um, yeah. anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to, to hear all that stuff. I'm headed to Turkey. In a couple of weeks. Really, so, uh, yeah, very I've cool. Before, but they have some incredible musicians. Great there musicians. Too. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to? Is it a, a sightseeing tour or holiday. music wise or holiday? Just a a holiday? holiday. Very rare what, holiday. What part of Turkey? Uh the southern coast of Turkey. Um, okay. Sort of that whole uh south of Antalya, over by uh Badrum, and I think it's Badrum and Kalkan. That it's, it's yeah. Uh, beautiful beautiful there I, I i just can't wait it's going to be interesting i had a good friend from ankara oh and, yeah 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 that's going to be I great would love, i would love to see that there's so many good ruins there you know the best yeah. maybe i i would love to go to see gobleki tepe you mm -hmm. know that's, that's the oldest site that they have uncovered in it, it they think it's dated to fifteen thousand years bc wow. so uh, but it's too far it's it's it, it's yeah. really too far I, I won't be able to go there. Yeah, you're gonna have a great time. I know it. Yeah. Another song of yours. I I I think you wrote this one, "The Dawning of the Day." Yeah. So that melody is an old Irish ballad. And, yeah. Beautiful um, song. I, I was working with Michael Dana, who's a film composer. Uh, mm -hmm. He did the Life of Pi and and different yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he was doing the music for this film called The Guys and. It was based on a true story of a 9-11 fire captain who had lost all of his men. And um, I went up there uh, to do some vocalese over the soundtrack. And I'm listening and I said, you know, that's you're using the Irish melody. That He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm going to use that as the basis for the score. So I went back to my hotel room and I'm thinking, you know, I looked up what the, the, the words of, of that song were and they were kind of deedle dee deedle -dee, you know, they didn't have the gravitas that that would be necessary for that movie. And so I said, you know, I why don't I try writing a whole new lyric for like a whole new lyric for that as if it had, and that would tell the story of those 9-11 <coughs> first responders, but tell it as if it had been written um about soldiers 300 years ago so make it sound like it's it's the original lyric and i had about two days to write it and um but i you know i i i was remembering all of like fragments it's that's how you write a song it's like fragments of memory right all of like from hearing you know the firemen and police you know talk about what happened to them them and they would talk about those people being their they were brothers to each other and 
And I remember, you know, the, those those horrific images, you know, of just everything that that just the the smoke. I the remember smoke, yeah. and the, the dust and and ever, and so all of that just came flooding back to me. And and I I wrote the song, and it ended up. It's a lot of people have recorded that song, mm. but it was performed by Ronan Tyne Ronan, in it. Yeah. And, dedication of world trade so yeah fantastic it was, tune. It was really nice to, to have that happen oh it was great man you are so talented it's, oh, thank you know, you. i'm gonna promote the hell out of you <laughs> i'm gonna, I'm gonna promote you everywhere well you know here's the deal with me he's like why aren't you more famous and i know i take full responsibility first of all i'm a bit of a hermit that's right why. so am i so i just yeah. am all right and now yeah. i just accept it and um i um, you could never really brand me, and yeah. and that is and and I understand from a marketing viewpoint that um you you really have to be one thing. Later, maybe you can branch out, but if they can't sort of pigeonhole you, and and I I've had a very uh, I've had a very eclectic career, and I mm -hmm. guess I thought because Judy Collins could get away with it, right. that I would probably get away with it too. Right. And I also think that, I mean, I got signed to Sony Classical, which was really great. And they wanted me to sing with an orchestra. Right. I had to sing an aria, even though I'm not a classical singer. I wasn't trained. And uh, I, they wanted me to write for movies. And I did yeah. all three of those things. Yeah. But when that record came out, radio, you know how radio is. Mm -hmm. They were expecting that third October Project record. That's what they were expecting, that I would come out. And that wasn't, that's not what they hired me to do. That's right, not what I, right. and um, so, you know, radio was going into that phase of, I call it the folk police. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, a lot of triple A and they heard me sing an aria and that was, that was oh, it. Geez. That was it for me. Yeah. But uh, it's funny though, because that, that album, because I wrote for movies that brought me a whole new audience outside way outside of october project and when i was signed there they they didn't even know october project at sony classical when i was signed um i came up and auditioned for them and uh so um you know i i when i my contract wasn't renewed there my the guy who was my champion left and went to the metropolitan opera and i everybody there was fired <laughs> it was like well you know cry a few tears and then wash your face and go out and get a new deal. And that's what I did. And I, that's when we did dark side of the moon. You know, there's so and, many great artists like you, especially women. There's a lot of great voices out there, yeah. but they're pigeonholed. You know, there's, I mean, you, you gotta be in a certain, you know, you gotta be Katy Perry. You gotta be, you know, that, right. that kind of, which you know, or it's like, it's just like, what is your genre? Is it? Yeah, urban? exactly. Oh, is Super. it Americana? Is Ridiculous. it? Is it and, you know? and I'm not. I'm not really any of those things. Right. So because you got um, talent. <laughs> well, whatever. No. I mean, it is, it, it is what it is. But you know, I have. I just. I have a very good life. I have nothing. Right. I have. A, I have a lot to be grateful for. So. Um, yeah. And I, I, I'm. I'm lucky that I was in a band in an era where they still were pushing bands. They they still got you out there. They yeah. still and and you know that that gave me a running start. I don't know yeah. how you do it now if you're young and trying to break into. It's I, very I, difficult. Very hard. I just don't think it can be done. Well, yeah. I mean, with a few very rare exceptions. Yeah. Um, so I so I'm lucky that I, yeah. I still have that. And and you know there are my contemporaries that are still working and um, you know great people. Um, Jonathan Brooke is, is great. Mm -hmm. She's out there all the time. And yeah. Paul Cole is another one. She's she's yeah. still out there working. Great voice, by the way, Paula Cole. Um, so yeah, it's it's all right. And and the thing is, I like for me, it's very important to entertain an audience. Mm -hmm. And I've been to a lot of concerts with artists that I love that I have fallen asleep. Mm -hmm. I mean. Like, and then I had to like wake myself up and then I fall asleep again. And because every single thing sounds the same. Yeah. Yeah. There's no charisma, no pizzazz. And exactly. When I do a live show, I mm -hmm. am committed to taking people on a full 
full journey of, mm -hmm. of everything life. And yep. I tell a lot of stories mm -hmm. and you're getting a full meal from me, Yep. you know, a, and especially awesome. in this day and age, people yep. are paying a lot of money for a ticket. Okay. And I, my, <laughs> my job is to absolutely transport them sure. out of their regular life and, and just entertain the hell out of them. That's what it's you about. Know? Yeah. That's, that's what, and, and I have to say, even though we don't sound anything alike, but, but the first, one of the first concerts I ever went to in my whole life was uh, as a teenager, a boyfriend brought me to see Bruce Springsteen before he, before he released Born to Run. Mm -hmm. And I saw him at West Point mm. and we were right up front and, you know, and I've seen him many times since, but right. the way that he gave 150% yeah. of himself and it was, you know, and it, you know, he made you laugh. He made you cry. He told stories. Right, he did all right. that. That just had a huge impact mm -hmm. on me. It's like, yeah. that is what you're supposed that that's the bar that yeah. has been set. Yep. And it's interesting. Carly Simon rarely performs live, mm -hmm. but I saw a, a concert that was unannounced. I was in uh, my first year of college and she popped up at the bottom line. I missed that place. I missed the bottom line. <clears throat> I Great place. The bottom line. Yeah. And uh, she did this, this concert and she was fabulous. Mm -hmm. she was so funny and mm -hmm. so warm mm -hmm. and just really had the audience in her pocket. So it's a shame that she has stage fright. It's just, yeah. It needs to just <laughs> I know. get over it, Carly. You're really good. <laughs> you know, get over it. I did not have the luxury of stage fright. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. That's a luxury if you yeah. anyway. So um, but no, she she was she was very, very good. And I I haven't seen many artists um that that put on that caliber of a show. There's right. a lot of razzmatazz. Yeah there you know big extravaganzas and everything but somebody yep. that can take a room mm -hmm. and, and just hold it in the pump you know what i mean that but that that you have to be committed as an artist to to want yeah. to do that people and there was sort of a especially in the 90s yeah where people would have it there was there was there was a way of disrespecting the audience right right you know, um i i it it was it was rude and it was yeah, it was sort I of agree. narcissism in, in, yep. in a weird way and um i'm not like that i'm, I'm just like I'm, i give it everything i've got whatever i happen to have that night i give it i i interview a lot of r b guys from the 70s yeah you know ohio players you know the back in, back in those guys you know yeah sure and i tell them i says oh my god you guys were the way they dressed the way they performed, how classy they were, the shy lights, the stylistics. And then you look at these rap guys. I said, oh, what happened? <laughs> you know, what happened, man? These guys had so much class, I you know? know, they were performers, you know? Yeah, yeah, Charisma. Jackson 5, you know, they were great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, times change, I guess, I don't know. I guess so. I just want to mention some of your other tunes that I just love. Um, your Christmas music is incredible. You are such Thank a you. great That's artist for Christmas. That's the record that I've ever, and I hate Christmas music. <laughs> I didn't want to do that record. And my husband. It's so good. He's just, he's a very forceful personality. And he, right. he, he bullied me into doing it. And he did. <laughs> he bullied me. And I, um, I but then I, I just thought, well, let's just, and and I made a Christmas record that I would want to listen to. Right. And now I, I really love it. I love that record. It's and great. I also threw in I threw in wintry songs. I mm -hmm. threw in Sandy Denny. I like to I like to cover Sandy sometimes because I want to bring her to people's attention. Right. I you know far too young. And mm. I do a Leonard Cohen song. I do Winter Lady. And um, yeah. So. Yeah, and I cover Joni on that too. I do urge for going. Well, so, I see you got some dates coming up. Are you? I do. Can you incorporate October Project songs into? Oh, your I do. No, no, oh, I do? always. Do. I mean, I you know when I first went out on my own, mm -hmm. um, live, 
with my own band that right. I put together. I I was you know, I've made dumb mistakes in my life, Ray. But okay. this was one of the <laughs> I said, No, I am not doing any October project ever again. I'm done. And it's like people would be grumbling that I didn't not one, you won't even do one. I know. That was that was so stupid. And it was really uh, it was my husband who said, what do you mean you're not doing October project? And I said, well, I just, I just don't. He's like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You get back out there. You, it's like, well, but I, he's like, I don't care. People are paying attention. They yeah. want to hear. It. And so uh, I, I just started incorporating some Good. of the yeah. old song. I mean, I don't, I, again, I have too much of my own stuff to right, do. Right, and right. now with this new record, Yes, I throw in a couple of October projects, okay. off and but beyond <laughs> no, I do. But beyond that, um, you know, I've got this new record that I've I've just been dying to I play live, and I yeah. I love having the full band with me. So we're in <laughs> this week, uh, this Saturday, we are yep. in Cannon Daigua, New York, which is up in the Finger Lakes. If you know that whole the Finger area, Lakes region, yeah. and yep. it's actually near Rochester. So okay. You can, about a half hour south of Rochester. Okay. So I'll be up there with my full band. It's a beautiful theater. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, Fort Hill Center of the Performing Arts. Right. Then later in the month, I'm going to be in Avenel, New Jersey. I'm okay. going to be a solo performance. That's near yep. Woodbridge, Woodbridge, New Jersey. And then um, I do Auburn, New York again in the fall. And I'll be up in uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts at the Spire Center. November right. 4th. Then I'm back out at Christmas doing sort of a hybrid show where we do one set is Christmas and cool. one set is, is new stuff. That's so awesome. So I'll be at the Kate in Old Saybrook. Right. And, and that's uh, December the 9th. And then I am back at the Sellersville Theater in Bucks County, Pennsylvania at, right. for a Christmas show. And, um, and then I've got tons of stuff in the new year coming up. I'm going to be in Portland, Maine with the band. I'm going to be in Natick. I'm going to be in... New Hope, I, I just all and probably Atlanta. I'll be going south and taking the band with me. So yeah, not I, I not getting. Are you still in DC? Where where? No, I'm in Florida. I'm about oh, ready to get hit with a big know. major hurricane tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> are you in in the in the yes. line of the Bradenton and Sarasota? <laughs> oh, oh wow, Sarasota is supposed to be beautiful. I've never been there, but uh, yeah, wonderful. it's pretty around here. I'm I'm real close to the beach, Siesta Key. Yeah, yeah, it's nice, uh, but I don't know what's going to happen after tomorrow. <laughs> well, batten down the hatches, buddy. <laughs> we did. We did. We'll see what uh, happens. Okay. You mentioned Bucks County. My my buddy lives there, and you did a, a, a show with her, Annie Haslam. Uh, Annie is just the best. Isn't she, <laughs> is she awesome? It, she's awesome. She's such yeah. a lovely lady, and yep. that, there's a signature voice. Mm, you yes. know it's Annie within... Two note. Really, you could get away with one note and know yeah. that's Annie. No one sounds like Annie Haslam. Nobody. And I was a huge Renaissance fan when yeah. I was a teenager. Yep. And um, you know, I got to sing with her. At yeah, the I saw the video. <laughs> <laughs> was I, was so, I was like, oh my God, my <laughs> my 15 year old self was like, oh my God, I'm singing with Annie Haslam. Yeah, you play guitar and, uh, too. Yes, I yeah. did. And we yeah. did I Think of You. And uh, anyway, she's she's very, very lovely. And Annie and I have oddly parallel lives. Mm -hmm. We both have had uh, problems with our ears, which Annie has. She said we both had Miles Copeland as a, a uh, <clears throat> manager. I know we Miles. Both... I had him on the show. Yep. Yeah. He's yeah. A, you know, he's he's crazy, but you got to <laughs> love him. Yeah. He, he's had a good time with him. True character. And, yep. and I... You know, he was he was he was okay to work with, and mm -hmm. uh, I anyway. And then um, we also were both in bands where there was an outside lyricist, mm -hmm. and we and Annie didn't write at the time, and right. I didn't write. At the time. But that that is a sort of you know straight pa strangely parallel. And she mm -hmm. married someone from this area. I married some. We live oh. not very far from one another, and cool. uh, and, then, and and then she came up for dinner. And she drove up and we have the identical 
big boxy Volvo. Like it's like, that's no, crazy. Stop, right? like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like the identical car. That and, is so uh, crazy. It's just funny, you know, yeah. uh, she's, yes, yeah, she's, she's more, and it's nice to see her out and, and touring yeah. and yeah. really, really getting out there again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. got depressed for a while from the, cause all her shows got canceled, you know, of course. Of course. wasn't really happy. Um, no, no, no. And it was, you know, everybody was so isolated. Yeah. That was, yeah. It's horrible time. And you know, her, her ex-husband was right. Speaking no. about ELO, Roy Wood. No. You know, the ELO guy that he, he actually, him and Jeff started the band, started ELO, her ex-husband. I, I didn't know Annie was married to him. Yeah. Oh, huh. I, I had no idea. Yeah. There's another wow. connection, the ELO thing. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Well, here's a question I ask everybody. I get some really interesting answers. Um, if you had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie, to perform with or collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? Oh, well, you're including the past. So yeah. that's, that's, that, that you're throwing, you're really throwing a wrench. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, honestly, I, okay. There's someone I would love to work with now because I, I just think his sensibility is so beautiful. And um, I mean, some people would say, well, Peter Gabriel or someone like that, or, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I love Sting. Who's, I just think he's, <laughs> that's him. And he's a fabulous musician. Mm -hmm. But um, but I I'd love to do something new. I'd love to go back to doing things for movies because I I really enjoy that. And mm -hmm. I would love to work with Gustavo Santao Olaya. He is I discovered. Do you know who he is? He no, did a movie called Ron Rocco. Okay. Ron Rocco. Ron Rocco is a charango. Okay. And I I played that record to death, and I. I just, I, I actually bought a Chirango and learned how to play it. Not like the way he plays it, but, right. and, and he, and I, I just felt like I discovered him. And then he ended up doing the movie for Brokeback Mountain. Mm -hmm. He ended mm -hmm. up doing the movie. If there's a beautiful film um, in Spanish called the motorcycle diaries. Did you mm -hmm. ever see that? Film? It's about oh. a young Che Guevara and, and he's traveling on a motorcycle. I, think I saw all that. No. Oh, it's, oh, and the whole soundtrack is Gustavo. The whole huh. soundtrack. So I just love his sensibility. And I would, I just, I just think that what we do would mesh so beautifully. So I just put it out there every time somebody asks me. I mean, there, it'd be fun to sing with someone, but um, it'd be more fun to sort of create something cinematic. That'd yeah. be really fun. Yeah. Your voice would be great in movies. Oh, oh. Or, okay, number two, though. Number okay. two. Number two. I, I am, I, I'm, I love French music from the early 20th oh, century. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, oh my God. And yeah. I read a lot about that era. I'm right. interested in sort of, um, well, I have a lot of interest, but, but sort of there was a whole um, hermetic revival in Paris mm -hmm. at the time mm -hmm. as well. And a lot of these composers were part of that. Mm -hmm. So Debussy, Ravel, um, and then, so if I would love to have, so, well, I made a little, just for fun, I made a little record of French songs from that era. Really? And I, yeah. So I would have loved to have, you know, worked with, with Ravel or Satie and mm -hmm. um, Satie wrote a lot of just cabaret songs for people mm -hmm. and they're beautiful. Yeah. I sang one of them on this record. And uh, so, um, yeah, that, that would be, if I could go back in time, I would just Very want to cool. stay there forever. You know, like that wonderful Woody Allen movie. Yeah. You know? You're heavily influenced by world music, which is cool. So oh, am yeah. I. I yeah. love, you know. Well, for example, I mean, if I could, or if I could have anybody's career, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be Madonna or Katy Perry. Or right. Anything. Right. Uh, I wish that I had, I could, I could have had, it's too late now, but a career like Mercedes Sosa. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with her? Mercedes Sosa has the best voice I've ever heard in my okay. life. And she, like Um Kutum, she's beloved right. by all people of you know, Latin America. Exactly. You yeah. her or start singing one of her songs mm -hmm. and people start crying. <laughs> <laughs> it really was like made you cry. And she sang just, oh my God. And I love the accompaniments mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, she had like these incredible guitar players with her. And mm -hmm. they're, I, 
anyway, Mercedes Sosa is just, okay. she is the queen for yeah. me. Yeah. The other side of my, um, my side, my mom's side, of course, I, I grew up with uh, Celia Cruz. Yeah, of course, yeah. Another okay. queen, you know, she was yes. the queen of, you know, the salsa and yeah. the Latin beat. You yeah, know. yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, I was just going to, oh, you should have been in Game of Thrones. I mean, you got the background for the medieval studies. You got the voice. Come on, right? <laughs> you even got yeah. the look. You can be an actress. <laughs> right. You know, you know I, I will tell you, though, I have, not, I have not seen one episode of Game of Thrones. Really? I'm even, saving even the it first one? Like if, if I broke yeah. my leg or something. Oh, you'd be perfect. For a while, do you know what I mean? You'd be I perfect. Was a, I do. Lo- I did. Um, I. I. I have to say. I. I. I was very sad when Better Call Saul ended. I was. Uh. <laughs> man. I, know. I, have, I used to. I used to watch. Um, the. Uh, the. You know the original series that it was based off of. Right. Uh, and I. I. My mother would bless her soul. She's gone now. But yeah. I, when I went to visit her, we would watch TV, and she said, "Oh, we gotta watch this show." And I said, "Well, what's <laughs> what is it, what's it about?" I said, "Well, it's about a fella." <laughs> oh, he gets into all kinds of trouble. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, you're watching Breaking Bad. <laughs> That's and, funny. And she, yeah, it was just very funny. She's she loved it. On your resume, it does say actress. Do you do you do some acting as well? Oh, I did a little bit of it, but did not. I, I I by sheer chance. I did an off-Broadway, but in a very, very prestigious theater, 59 East 59, and they were doing a big series called Brits on Broadway. Huh. And uh, they brought over uh, a play that was, it was really a review, a musical review based on Woody Allen short stories that mm-hmm. are really funny. They're really silly and funny. So it was these little vignettes w- that would have music in them. And we all were the band. We had to play instruments. and. It was a big hit in London. So they brought it over here and I was one of the, I played, we all had to play several different characters and I, you know, they, I, we, I had to sing and it was some of the most fun I have ever had in my life. It was a very silly show. And um, <laughs> so if you like, I mean, I, I wouldn't, so, but that, that's really the extent of it. I mean, I used to do, <clears throat> I, 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 when I got out of school, I, was auditioning for for things, trying to yeah. maybe get into musical theater, but I didn't really have the proper yeah. training. And you got the look. Yeah. Well, yeah, but uh-huh. I, no one ever got my voice in musical theater because yeah. they it was always sopranos that got all the work, and yeah. it just didn't write for people like me. You either had to be like a or or a yeah, high yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not either one of those things. So yeah. you know, maybe someday on, be fun on, to do ca- on camera. Eye. On camera, you look a little bit like a, a Nicole Kidman type, oh, you know, with the hair you. and everything, you know. Bless you. So, yeah. I always say, be, you know, I do get that a lot. Do you get that? I, yeah. I get she's, it. She's a cool I, lady. She's no, a cool she, lady. Yeah. No, but I always say, like, no, no. <laughs> I am. I am Nicole Kidman's less attractive. I <laughs> No, don't say I that. Am. Yes. No, it's true. <laughs> but we definitely could be relatives. Like, if yeah. I said, oh yeah. My cousin, you go, yeah, I see the resemblance. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I interview a lot of actresses yeah. that also have a music career. I did Rebecca Pigeon recently, who did Oh, a, she's interesting. You know she, Rebecca Pigeon? She, well, have I you just heard her music? Heard her echoes, and I've seen her perform in movies. Yeah. And she's married to David Mamet, correct? Yeah, her music is yeah. incredible, you know? Yeah. yeah. You'd like it. I yeah. think you would enjoy her music. Very different, you know? Yeah, She's into the um, the Hindu, the Hindu spiritual things. And, you know, she was in a lot of great movies, too. She was oh, in Red. Oh, oh yeah. You know? Yeah. Really, she's really nice, too. You, I, you guys would hit it off. Yeah. Well, I want to say special thanks to the great Billy James. I've known Billy for years and years. He's a nice, great guy. I'm yeah, glass on your PR for arranging this interview with Mary. And of course, purchase the latest release by Mary Fall. Can't get it out of my head. It's available now. Do you, uh, you, can you get it on Amazon, iTunes, uh, and and on my website, Mary. On Fall. your website. Yes. Probably so. make more money on your website, not Amazon. I know how that is. 
<laughs> I got three books on Amazon. <laughs> they take a big chunk. <laughs> it's been nice talking with you. This was a really fun conversation. It was a fun conversation, Mary. Let me tell you, man, I'm I'm a big fan of yours now. I appreciate I appreciate good music and intelligent music. And you got it all, you know. That's lovely of you to say. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll uh, revisit again, um, maybe for the next album, or I hope you go on tour and come to Florida. That'd be nice. Yeah. You know, I need to find the right. I I was booked for Florida. There was a place in Tampa. There was a performing arts center there, and mm -hmm. they just never got back up and rolling again. Yeah, you know, I don't know why because Florida never really locked down. Not, not really. No, they didn't. You know? um, yeah. Well, lucky you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, I mean, things in PA got back up and running fairly quickly. Right. Uh, Atlanta was like at Phoenix. You'd never know anything ever happened. Really? Um, oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did. I did a show at the um, uh, Museum of, of Instruments there. It was a fabulous place, and. Uh, Anyway, uh, but, you know, we seem to be out of the woods, so, you know. Yeah, New York is probably out. your your hot spot, right, for for touring New York? Uh, yeah, 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 everything's opened up. Sort Massachusetts, of maybe, I don't know. Massachusetts, Philadelphia, that whole area, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Pennsylvania D.C., you should be in D.C. I have, I've played in D.C. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I've been, I, I, yeah, I was back there a couple of months ago, and, um, Hopefully, be back again. You um, should be at the uh, the Birchmere in Virginia. Play, I uh, played there with October Project. Oh, did you? I played Good. There, I brought my band to the Hamilton. Okay. Yeah. You know, which is a nice room. Yeah. Yeah. Ramshead's another good one in Annapolis. Ramshead on stage. Oh, I played. I played the Ramshead. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, my yeah. old stomping grounds over there. That whole area. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you, Mary. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, and good, good, good luck, luck to you okay, and the new album. A, I hope you get a film deal. Yeah, Movie, something. Okay. I'm working on the script now. <laughs> okay. Nice talking with you. Good talking to you too, Mary. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.